when I set off around America, it was to write a book about the people who live off-grid. I travelled all over, meeting outcasts, billionaires, the foreclosed and the forgotten. I wanted to find out why such a disparate group were all heading for the hills at the same time. The only way was to go and meet them. Andrea Johnson spent two years trying to find the perfect place to live off-grid in America. I basically had a big road atlas and I had decided I wanted to live in a place no more than 2,500 people. So that immediately, you know, the smallest dots. <laughs> I love truck steps. Everything's 12 volt, TVs, DVDs, you can rent audiobooks. Successful professionals like Vonnie Mallon have just decided to reclaim their lives. Vonnie was vice president at Urban Outfitters. It was a great company, but they, they definitely find ways to take more than you can give. This represents freedom to me, and through freedom, I think, you know, love, reconnecting with my relationship too. Surfer Alan Wiesbecker is living on a beach in Mexico because he thinks that U.S. society is about to crumble and crash. We are dealing with possibly an apocalyptic future. It's sort of Mad Max stuff, you know, and riots and martial law. And it's very easy to say, well, I hope I'm wrong, but there's a part of me that just says, well, you're going to fucking see how stupid you are. This is a small community right here on the beach. There's an ocean with fish and there's coconuts to eat. I don't know what else I'm missing. I mean, I have everything. I have uh, a microwave and a blender in my little kitchen there, and I have internet here. Carolyn Chute, who wrote The Beans of Maine, lives heavily armed in a piece of woodland in Maine. We want to be in the woods. We we're tied to neighbors. The neighbors always picked on us because we have stuff around. When we lost our son, that's when I really lost trust. If we just went in and had the baby, it would have been fine, but we had difficulties. I lost my doctor. I wasn't eligible anymore. I made too much. I go, can I come in? They go, we're just going to send you home again. It was so crushing that you couldn't trust doctors. Eustace Conway had a book written about him called The Last American Man. The government doesn't want people to have freedom. Basically, we are set up to be slaves. And so growing food is empowerment. It could be state land, federal land, or it could be on your own land. I prefer growing it on my own land. Melinda Foster lost her home in New York when she couldn't pay the mortgage. So she put her three kids into a trailer and drove down to East Texas. Yeah. If, if I was a millionaire, I really wouldn't go on grid. There's too many of us to keep living the way we're living and, and still have anything left of our planet, really. Mike Reynolds has built more off-grid homes than anyone else in America. He's an architect responsible for the Earthship. He thinks there should be a state of emergency declared because of the environment. We have a national emergency. Our very sphere that we live on is going down the tubes pretty fast. They can employ martial law. The end result would be you are a developer, you want to build 20 condos, and they're green, and you've got some documentation and proof that shows that you're attempting a green thing. you got your permit in one hour. Let's do it now before it is too late. Those are just some of dozens, hundreds of characters over around America who I filmed with, and they're representative of tens of thousands more. Make no mistake, off the grid is the next big thing. You just might end up thinking you want to live that way.